Hi everyone, today I'm on the outskirts of Pura City in Yingpan Shan, Yingpan Mountain. Uh, this is a mountain I appreciate particularly because uh, when I moved to Pua early in, in 2016, uh, this is among the first mountains that I visited. It produces uh, pretty cheap tea but of a great price for value. And here most people make uh, black tea. Uh, you can see these leaves were, uh, were harvested uh, yesterday. So they've been laying on these withering mats for uh, over 24 hours and uh, they are ready to be rolled now. So we're now going to take these leaves out of the withering mats uh, using these bamboo baskets and then we're going to go to the rolling room where we have the rolling machines and uh, there we're going to roll it. Come on. So here my friend is putting the tea in, in the rolling machine. Uh, we're going to start with a low pressure and increase the pressure as we go. The rolling is going to last between one and two hours. Uh, the boss here likes to, to give a, a long and heavy rolling. You can also notice that the rotation speed is, uh, is uh, slower than uh, in most mountains. It's because he tweaked, uh, he tweaked that parameter himself. And you can see here that uh, we don't have that many broken leaves. Uh, which is good because it's a loss and it uh, introduces a lot of dust in the tea. So this is something we have to control with the, the weathering parameters and the rotation speed and the pressure applied to the rolling machine. So this rolling is finished. It lasted for over an hour and a half and I can feel that the leaves are a bit warm inside. It's because they are oxidizing. So after the rolling they're gonna pile them and it's going to be left to oxidize for a couple of hours. You can see that the leaves have already turned dark and when you smell the leaves you can smell that um, the fragrance changes progressively as the tea oxidizes, just like a fruit that, uh, that's being ripened. So we've collected all the leaves from the former rolling batch and uh, you can see that uh, they are quite clustered together the, there are these kinds of knots in the tea, so we'll need to first loosen them with a dedicated machine and then we will do the piling for the oxidation. Once the leaves are properly oxidized, they are going to be dried and in this factory, like in most of them in Yunnan, they are dried with hot air. So you can see it's very much like the closet where, where you can dry your clothes. Uh, you have some flat dunk baskets which are piled on top of each other on the rack and uh, this can also rotate and you have hot air flowing from the side. So, the drying takes uh, about 20, 20, 20 to 30 minutes and you set the temperature according to the taste you want to get. So if you want to get a more malty taste, you're going to use a higher temperature. If you want to get a more neutral taste, you're going to do that at low temperature. Um, if you really want no malty taste at all, it's better to dry it in two steps. So you dry it first until it's like 70-80% dry, then you let it rest and you let the water from inside the leaves go on the outside by diffusion and capillarity and then you dry again. And you can see the result here. So this is a classic one but two leaves Dian Hong, Yunnan Black. And here is uh, how much they make every day. Look. So this is the production of the day. You can see that's quite a lot. And despite being a pretty small factory, uh, they can still output over one ton every day. So there are many such factories in Yunnan and they are very efficient because as you can see they are not big and they only have a couple of employees. Most of the time they are just family run businesses and yet despite their small size they can output a lot of tea. 
and a tea which is usually of pretty good quality because they are specialized in black tea processing. So the two people who work there, they process black tea 10 months a year every day. So we're in the hills now near the factory and you can have a look at the landscape behind me. So the altitude is pretty high, it's 1,400 meters, so about, about the same as Jingmai, but you can see that uh, the hills are smaller, so we're kind of on a plateau on the outskirts of poor city. And behind me you can see a variety of varietals. Uh, here you have the old varietals and you see it's being protected from insects with some little uh, sticky papers. And in the back there you have some baihao, some which make very uh, furry buds, very um, golden leaves if you make, make black tea or white uh, leaves if you make white tea or green. And you also have I guess some oolong tea and some yunkang uh, number 14 which is very good for the fragrance of uh, black tea and green tea. Despite not being a very famous area, the raw material grown in Yingpanshan is of very good quality because the government decided to prohibit the use of pesticides and chemical fertilizer and it's been going on for over five years now. So you can consider it's kind of organic quality even though it doesn't have the official label. And this is how we managed to have very good uh, price for value for this tea because we have good, good material thanks to favorable government policies. You don't have a high reputation, you have a very efficient factory with few workers and you have very good expertise in terms of uh, processing skill.